Another term that you might hear when we talk about pixel-based images or raster-based images is the term megapixel. Megapixel literally means millions of pixels and is the term used to describe a digital camera's resolution. And a megapixel is one million pixels. And so when we're talking about how many pixels an image or a capture device can capture when it's creating the image that you're using for your project, in general, your images are going to have millions of pixels. If we go back to the term pixel count or pixel dimension, this is describing how many total pixels are in the image. And just like resolution, the more pixels in the image, in general, we would say that means that you have a higher um, image quality. You're also going to have a higher uh, file size, too, so keep that in mind. Um, but when we talk about millions and millions of pixels in an image, there might be 1,635,325 pixels. We wouldn't want to say that number over and over again and repeat that. It's, it's kind of long-winded. We would say we have 1.6 megapixels. Or maybe uh, a digital camera can capture 24,312,912 pixels, just to make up another number. That's wordy. It's too much to say all at once. So we would say it can capture 24 megapixels or 24.3 megapixels or whatever the, the number that I used happen to be. You can convert the total number of pixels, if you're talking about it in terms of millions, to megapixel by dividing by a million. So if you plug in to uh, 24,925,612 um, uh, pixels and you divide it by a million, it would come out to 24.9 something megapixels. And it's much easier or it's much more effective to say it's 24.9 megapixels than to say the big long number that people just stop listening to after a while anyway. And while we're talking about it, it's very common um, right now in 2017 when this video is being recorded for a digital camera or a DSLR, which stands for Digital Single Lens Reflex Camera. If it was an analog camera, it would just be considered an SLR. Um, it's very common for DSLRs to have a capture ability of 18 to 24 megapixels at a reasonably affordable cost uh, for students or for working professionals to buy a camera. 24 million megapixels is a lot of information. When I was in college and we were taking our digital photography class and we had to purchase a camera, it was common for, for digital cameras to have 4 megapixels or 10 megapixels. If you had like a 12 megapixel, megapixel camera, it was huge. Like you were like the cool kid in class who had the digital camera that could capture the most pixels for your image. Um, if you went any higher than that, um, an 18 to 24, for example, megapixel camera, if it even existed at the time, cost thousands and thousands of dollars. But now because technologies are changing and we can uh, more easily create these devices that can capture the pixel pixels, um, you can very easily get a megapixel camera that can, or a digital SLR camera that can capture 18 to 24 megapixels at an affordable cost. I had affordable in air quotes there, I know you can't see that, because it's define affordable, right? So if somebody wants to spend $100 on a digital camera, they're probably not going to get a DSLR and they're probably not going to get 18 to 24 megapixels, but for under $1,000, you should be able to get a really great camera that can capture a lot of megapixels. When we talk about raster-based images, we're talking about images with pixels and we're talking about images with resolution. It's important to note that raster-based images are not the only type of image that you could use in graphic arts. Um, when we talk about um, imagery, we usually define image quality in terms of resolution, resolution being the number of pixels per square inch in an image. And as I said earlier, in general, we say that the higher the resolution value, the higher the image quality. However, not all images have pixels. Vector art, for example, is comprised of anchor points and directional lines constructed using mathematical formulas to generate an image. So therefore, vector art imagery is not made from pixels, so it does not have a resolution. Now, we're going to primarily focus on raster-based images, but it's important for you to know that, that there are different types of imagery and that if you choose to use vector art, which can be created in Adobe InDesign or Adobe Illustrator, or even in Photoshop, which we'll cover in later chapters in the book, um, your resolution is not defined by pixels because pixels don't exist in these images. There are some important things to know about raster and vector-based images. Um, for example, raster images are made of pixels or picture elements that are tiny individual dots like we discussed in previous slides. And so if you zoom into the raster-based image, you will start to see tiny dots or you'll see the rasterization or the pixelation of the image. And so if we were to zoom in on the image, we would lose image quality because when we look at raster-based images, we look at them zoomed out to an extent that 
we don't see those squares anymore. We just see an image and we create the illusion of tonal values based on those pixels that are all stacked next to each other. Vector images are made for mathematical calculations. Um, what happens is you have these anchor points and directional lines like are illustrated on the first slide um, of this topic. And between the two of them, they're able to create different shapes. And because, because the, the image is made from mathematical formulas, the image can be recalculated or or regenerated every time it's resized. And so when you look at an image that has anchor points and directional lines, there's mathematical data uh, embedded into each anchor point and each directional line that say that the image should start here. And the middle dot should be 50% of the way between the two end dots. And the curve that comes out of this handlebar, which is called a directional line, creates an arc. And that arc is 30% um, circle or whatever it happens to be. And it should be 20% of the height of the shape. And so if I was to make this shape bigger or smaller, it's not saying that this dot should be two inches to the left of the middle dot. It's saying it should be half the distance of the whole length of the shape apart. And so if the distance of my line right now is four inches wide, but I was to scale this larger and make it eight inches wide, it's simply going to say that this anchor point should be half the total distance of the entire shape from the middle. And so if the, the entire distance is now eight inches, half of that would be four inches. And so it would just place these anchor points four inches apart. And the same goes with the directional lines. They create the curves um, or the angles to which your shape is created from. And so if this handlebar says that this arc should be half the distance of the total height of the shape and it should have a curve of a certain value, as I drag and resize this image, this curve is not a set size. It's a percentage or it's it has mathematical values that say if the distance is four inches across, this curve will be half the distance of the height or whatever it happens to be. So if I made the shape bigger and made it eight inches wide, it would have to recalculate the curve based on the known information. Now we're not going to focus too much on vector art right now because there's an entire chapter on vector art later in the book, but it's important right now for you to know some key things. So I'm going to, I'm going to give you a minute to read through the rest of the facts about raster-based images on this slide. And when we pick up with the next video, I'll talk about some of the more important things that you can kind of isolate and um, that you should memorize as the differences between raster and vector art.